All right, everybody, let's do this. I'm Mr. Gazda here. Let's, uh, let's get started. Rocks, okay? Basic level, since you're a kid, people think of rocks. And what do they think of? They think of that awesome volcano, dude. Check it out. Look at the lava. Is it awesome? It's totally awesome. So cool. And people, that's what people think of when they think of rocks. But most people don't look out at a field like this and think of lava and igneous rocks. But you have to realize that a lot of igneous rocks form in a situation like this, but deep underground. Now, I don't know if there's any in this, partic this particular location in this picture, but one of the things we really want to get think thinking about is the igneous rocks that form deep underground from liquid rock like we just saw, but never comes out of a volcano, gets trapped underground, and will cool very slowly over a long period of time. So that's a very common type of igneous rocks that we see a lot. Here's some notes. Please pause and copy this down. Okay, rocks are made of minerals. And the example I often give, rocks are made of minerals the way bricks are made, uh, sorry, walls are made of bricks. Walls are made of bricks. Um, the exception is rocks of, that are organic origin. In this case, organic means from a living thing, and minerals can't be organic, but small exception. Uh, two main types of rocks if, we wanna, if we're going to do this. Uh, polymineralic versus monomineralic. Uh, poly means many, mono means one. People often can relate back to... Um, like a global studies class where they talk about monotheistic and polytheistic, multiple gods, mono means one. So um, a polymineralic rock is, uh, has a number of different minerals together and monomineralic uh, really just made of one mineral. Example, limestone is made of calcite, rock salt made of halite, dolostone is composed of the mineral dolomite, and so uh, the, next, uh, the next up is the three main types of rocks. Three main categories. We have igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, and metamorphic rocks. Igneous, we were just talking about. From molten rock, that's a word for liquid rock. Think of lava. And deep underground, like I said, it's called magma. Sedimentary rocks are pieces of rock that get cemented together. So you can think of things like sand settles to the bottom of the water near the beach, and it's going to get compacted, cemented to form uh, sedimentary rocks. And metamorphic rocks are rocks that have undergone a metamorphosis and you may be familiar with that word oftentimes. The, what's, what's the key example for uh, the word metamorphosis? That's right. A caterpillar turned into a butterfly, metamorphosis. So a metam that, that, that phrase means a change. So a metamorphic rock existed as another type of rock pr previously, and then it got changed significantly, mainly by heat and pressure from being buried deeply. That's, that's mostly it. can be just heat alone, too. That happens as well. Please pause it, copy these down. Okay, some things here. Igneous rocks, uh, they form when molten rock cools, cools and solidifies. Note, molten rock is liquid rock, solidification is the process of liquid to solid. Um, fact, and I think I always thought that this was cool, the slower that molten rock will cool, the larger the mineral crystals will be. Okay, the more time, the more time it takes the, the larger the crystals are. So um, in this picture here, and if this is on your paper, these minerals here are about probably about this big on that paper. We call those very large crystals. For, for an igneous rock, those are very large crystals. Um, and the texture, uh, the name of the texture when the crystals are large is coarse. So really with all rocks, when the pieces that make it up be the minerals, uh, the crystal, the mineral crystals, or the uh, pieces of sedimentary rocks, if they're, if they're pretty large, we call the texture to be coarse. If they're really small, oftentimes you can't see them at all, but with the naked eye, we say the texture's fine. What do we got here? So what we have here, this is trying to show uh, the crystallization from a uh, liquid, magma, lava, stage one, stage two, stage three, with the white here is the, is the liquid, is the magma, let's say it's underground. So as it slowly cools, that mineral forms first. So that mineral has the higher 
melting point as it cools down. And that one will crystallize first. This stuff's still liquid. Then it, it continues to cool. You see uh, another one of these minerals cooled here. Then you see this, these uh, gray minerals start to, start to form because they will form at lower temperatures as it cools. And then uh, you see how angular they are. All the white here is still uh, liquid. And then more time goes by. All this will cool and fill in the space here. This can take hundreds, thousands of years underground, thousands of years. Lava flowing on the surface, it may take more like hours, days, weeks, months, but um, underground can take thousands of years or even longer. Um, so what you end up with in this rendition here of the crystals, these are angular crystals and they're interlocking like a three-dimensional puzzle. So you often see this, but I wanted to show the stages of how that all happens. Okay, pause and copy this down. Okay, so we're talking about fast cooling. The only thing that will cool f fast or quickly will be lava, and that's going to be on the surface of Earth. When it cools quickly, and we're talking here seconds to minutes, you can get something like a glassy texture, volcanic glass, like I'm sitting, very cool. I'll show you some of, the, some of that in just a second. You can have vesicular texture, um, and where you can... Uh, glassy or vesicular texture. You know, I'm just going to show those now and go back to them. This, come on, how cool is that? This is obsidian, uh, also known as volcanic glass. This is, the, the lava will cool so quickly that the crystals don't really have a chance to, for, to form any sort of crystal shape at all, and you get this um, volcanic glass. Oftentimes, obsidian is very black. Here, this is like tiger stripe here. It has these different colors in it, and you see how it breaks. This is a really good picture, a uh, really good picture of it. This is vesicular texture, okay? Vesicular texture are all these little holes. It looks like a sponge. That, and here's another one here, okay? This maybe you can't see it as good. This is even uh, more vesicular. It almost looks, it's hard to even describe, uh, but the vesicles are really large here. Those are the holes, and basically what this is is that uh, it, if the lava flowing has a lot of gases in it, dissolved in it, the gases try to escape through the lava, but the lava is pretty, pretty thick, so gases don't go through that quickly. Think of um, think of uh, like uh, the bubbles in soda, right? Those bubbles will come up to the top and, and go out and you know, be foam at the top. But uh, when, a lot, when it's lava, it's much thicker, so it takes much longer. And what happens, as, as those bubbles are working their way through, trying, you know, trying to escape the lava, that lava cools, and those bubbles are kind of trapped in there and causes these air pockets. And therefore, this... And especially, this is pumice. Uh, oftentimes, this rock can be very light because there's so many air pockets in it. As you pick it up, it's hard to even believe it's a, it's, it's a rock based on how light it is. So, uh, yeah, so that's the vesicular texture. They form so quickly that the gas is trapped in the lava and don't have time to escape. The gas bubbles kind of get frozen in the rock. I saw was once it was described as like having to go back to soda, uh, pour some soda, and then you have the bubbles at the top. And if you have a good amount of bubbles at the top of soda, and then you froze it instantly, those frozen bubbles at the top would be similar to what you get with vesicular texture. It's, it's, it's a pretty good comparison. Um, and these are all called extrusive. Any rock that forms on the surface of Earth from lava flowing surface of Earth, we put that in the category of extrusive igneous rocks. If it's inside the earth and never came out onto earth and cooled slowly in, uh, underground, it's called an intrusive igneous rock.